today we will use Affinity Publisher to create a set of business cards. I'll briefly touch on how to get your design from designer, getting your data ready and show you a workaround for dynamic QR codes. Let's get started by switching to Affinity Designer first, where I already created some assets for a fictional company, including the business card. Before we dive into Publisher, let's focus on the preparation of our data, in this case the list of employees. The business card includes a photo and a QR code. Besides the list of employees, we need headshots for each employee. Even though Affinity introduced QR codes recently, they cannot be dynamically created, so we are going to need a QR code per employee. I'm using one folder where everything will be gathered. Here I have the CSV file with the employees and the photos. The CSV file contains the list of employees with fields separated by a semicolon. Let's take a closer look at the CSV file. I have the basic details of an employee, but also a column containing the name of the photo image. The final two columns are the details for the QR code. As mentioned, I will need to create the QR codes as external images and the QR column code will contain the data or the text in the actual QR code for the employee and the last column will be the reference to the QR code image file. Going back to the list of files, you can see I also have a text file with the QR codes, which is a copy from the QR code column from the CSV file. And similarly, I have a text file with the file names of our QR codes. We're going to need them both in a minute. To generate the QR codes, we can use one of the online bulk QR code generators available on the web. The one I'm using is called qrbatch.com and has two features I'm looking for. First, you can set custom file names for each QR code you generate. And secondly, you can set the size and the output format of the QR code. So first, we provide the text we want to have in each QR code, which I already have in the text document I showed earlier. We can just copy and paste this to the website. Each line will correspond with one QR code, so in our case 24 QR codes will be generated. Next, we need the list of the file names, which as you guessed I will copy from the file I prepared earlier. To use custom names for each QR code, we can enable the custom option here, and then paste the list of file names in the text area below. This will make sure that the generated QR codes from the top text area will have the file name from this list, based on the line number. Excellent! Now, let's set the properties of the QR codes. I'll use something like 500 by 500 pixels and keep the format as PNG, but actually selecting SVG would have been a better choice, especially for printing purposes. Let's press Generate, and when the generation is finished, press Zip Download to download it. When I switch back to my files, I can see I have a zip file in the folder. And when we take a look at its contents, we do have all the QR codes we generated. I'll select and copy them to the same folder as the photo images. I think we should be ready to go. We got our list of employees, the list of the headshots and the QR codes for each employee in the list. Finally, we can now switch to Affinity Publisher. I'm going to create a new file from the file menu and search for the business card template. Make sure to select the correct orientation. In my case, I need the landscape version. I'm going to accept the default settings and press create. For the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to use any master pages. Our business cards has a front and a back. So, I'm going to add a page to the document using the Pages panel and press OK to add the page after page 1. Now that we have our blank business card pages, time to switch back to Affinity Designer to copy the elements and paste them into Publisher. I'll start with the front of the business card and select all the elements from Designer. Let's copy them and go back to Publisher and paste the copied elements to the first page. The pasted elements are a little too large for the business card, 
Let me quickly zoom out and scale down the elements. After some repositioning and realigning, we have the same layout as in Designer. I have removed the existing headshot as this will be inserted by the data merge we are going to apply after we finish the business card template. I have also removed the QR code as this will also be inserted with the data merge. Now let's repeat the same steps for the second page of the business card. I'll copy the elements from Designer and paste them into Publisher. A little bit of tuning to make it fit. Perfect. The template is ready. Now it's time to add the dynamic elements. I'll add a picture frame which will contain the headshot of the person. To make the picture clip inside the curve, I'll make sure it is a child of the curve. Next, the picture frame for the QR code. I want this to have the same height as the logo text. So I'll move it on top of the logo text and snap it to make it the same height. After correcting its position, let's also make sure it is not a child of the curve. We don't want the QR code to be clipped. For clarity, let me also name the picture layers. Now that our template is ready, time to link the data using the Data Merge Manager. I'll open up the Data Merge Manager from the Window menu and add the CSV file with the employees. Notice how it is only showing one field. This is due to the separator I use in the CSV. It is currently set to comma, but when we change this to semicolon, we do get all the fields. I'll also enable the preview for record one. This will give an idea how the merge data will look while working on this template. Now that we got our data linked, time to assign fields from the data into the document. For this, we need the fields panel. This can be enabled from the window references menu. As you can see, all the fields we have in the CSV file are shown in the fields panel. Let me quickly move it to the left so it's not in our face. Assigning the fields are quite easy. We select a piece of text and then double click on the field name from the fields panel. Notice how the selected text is now replaced with the value of the field. I'll repeat the same steps for the function and the email. For the mobile phone number, I want the text mobile to be always shown. So this time, I'll just select the number part and then double click the field. For the pictures, we can select the picture frame, in this case the QR code, and double click the field containing the field name for the QR code. Once you assign a field to a picture frame, notice how Affinity now shows a blue picture icon. I'll do the same for the headshot picture frame. Okie dokie, we got everything set up. Now let's apply the data merge, which we can do from the data merge manager. I can just press the generate button and Affinity Publisher will create a new file based on the file we are working on. It will fill and generate pages based on the data from our employees list. Pretty easy. If we look at the generated file, I notice that we have a couple of issues. On the first page, I don't have the headshot. And secondly, the QR codes are not showing up. This means we have some errors in our CSV file. As this generated file contains errors, I'll just discard the generated file by closing it and skipping the save. Let's go to the list of files and check our CSV file. First thing I notice is that I forgot to add the PNG extension to the QR code file field. Let me edit the file and add the PNG extension to all the fields. Now that all the QR code file field names have the extension .png, I can go back to Publisher and do another data merge using the data manager. But before pressing the generate, we first need to press the update button so that the modified CSV is loaded. Notice when I press the update button how the QR code is now loaded in the preview. I also noticed that I did make a mistake when generating the QR code files. The current QR codes have a white background which I didn't want. Luckily, I still have the browser and the QR batch website still open. 
I'll enable the transparent background option and generate the QR codes again. After downloading the zip files, unpacking and replacing the QR code images in our working folder with the CSV file, we can go back to Affinity Publisher and update the data file again to force a reload. Perfect, I have the transparent QR code in the preview. We still have the issue of the headshot not showing up. I think I know the issue. The name is Johnson without an H and I'm guessing the image file has a typo. I'll go back to my file manager and check if I'm right. And indeed, it is spelled Johnson with an H. Let me correct this mistake by renaming the file. Back in Publisher, I'll open up the Data Merge Manager again and press Update to reload and refresh the preview. Excellent, the headshot is now showing as expected. One last thing, the QR code is black. I believe the original design, it was white. Let's quickly check. Yep, it was white. To fix that, I can add an invert adjustment to the picture frame containing the QR code in Publisher. Beautiful, I think we're done. Let's open up the Data Merge Manager one more time and press Generate. The new file looks pretty good. The cool part is that you can still make changes. For example, we can fix the position of the photos if they are not aligned correctly. It is always good to double check the whole document and fix issues. For example, the font size we used for the name is too large to fit on the business card for some names. I can either adjust it directly to make it fit, but then it will not be consistent. I would then need to make the same change on all the cards. Much easier is to close this document and change the font size on the main template document. I'll quickly do that and regenerate the document. I think we fixed all the issues now. As a finishing touch, I'll adjust the alignment of the headshot photos and we're done. I hope you found this video useful and learned something new along the way. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next video.